Lord, I thank you for the worship, God. You are so amazing. It's so much fun to worship you, Christ, to worship the maker of the earth and to worship God, uh, the one who died just for us. Um, Lord, I ask that you bless this message and the rest of our evening, God. I ask that you bring um, blessings and healing and uh, strength over our pastor as she shares with us this evening, God. Uh, let there be no pain um, while she speaks after her surgery, God. Let her just uh, fly right through it, God. And um, we just ask that you bless this offering and bless the hands that are giving. And please bless double on the hands I cannot give. And we ask this on your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody ready for the holidays? Ready or not, here they come. Yes. 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 Right? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Good to be here. <coughs> Feeling very good, and um, I don't have a long message tonight because I got a little something for you to sit and watch and reflect upon. And then we're gonna do some Christmas songs to usher us out into the holidays. So I'm just thankful for all of you guys here tonight, and I pray that um, you find comfort and joy and a sense of belonging here, and um, and peace. And as you step into some, maybe some trying holiday times with family, for some of you, you may be seeing some people you haven't seen in a while. And that's all good, but it can be scary. And so I pray that you take the, the Lord's good spirit with you. He can overcome any in-law or outlaw you have to face. <laughs> that's when you say, oh Lord, I don't want to go without your spirit. <laughs> um, so I'm thankful for that. And so I'm just going to share a couple of scriptures with you. Um, and then I have a, a video for you to watch. It's a sit back and relax kind of video. I knew I didn't want to be speaking or yelling a long time today, not knowing how I'd feel. But I praise God for his hand. Amen. Okay. Amen. Uh, three IVs later, I hate IVs. And they did not go well. But um, the bruising will subside eventually. A nurse almost got punched. <laughs> you know, Bob wasn't with me when they were doing the, the pre-op stuff. And I, I said, um, can we numb this area first? I don't do well with needles. Amazingly, all I've been through this year, I still don't do well with needles. And so she goes, well, you know, it's kind of a waste to do the lidocaine shot because it's almost as bad as the real IV. And I said, no, not for me, it's not. And she said, well, the lidocaine actually shrinks your vein and makes it harder. I said, well... Okay, your call. So she called another nurse to hold my other hand, so I squeezed her fingers off. <laughs> yeah, that, that hurts really bad. Oh, darn, it blew out. We had to do another one. I'm like, oh, oh, wait for the good part. This is the good part right here. So then she, she's you know tapping on this vein over here. And uh, so I squeezed the rest of her fingers off on the other side. <laughs> Oh, darn, that blew out, too. Oh. Well, I kind of, and at this point, she said, well, I'll call the anesthesiologist to do it. I don't do it more than twice. So I'm waiting for him. I actually had a tear run down my eye. I was, I was angry. I was hurting in pain. And I called her back over. I said, this sucker's blowing up. So she takes my hand with a little gauze. She puts it over the spot. She goes, she goes well, let's just squeeze on it a little bit. So she squeezed this big vein. And I almost decked her. I, I like, I think we could try an ice bag instead. You know? Oh, any of you have seen the clip on the NFL? The, the guy that broke his nose and his trainer comes up to him oh, yeah. to try to tip the, and the guy about, he's like, are you serious? I have a broken nose and you're going to touch my nose. So anyway, Bob and I were laughing about that scene because I, I think I had his eyes that day. Uh -oh. Today, I'm like, you did. I did. I'm like, I'm like seriously, you're going to squeeze that? So anyway, she gets my ice bag. So the anesthesiologist came in and he and I understand one another. Put <laughs> tourniquet on extra tight, let my arm hang a little while, tap the crap out of my hand to make the veins open up, and I'm thinking, okay, that's not feeling so good either. But he gave me my lidocaine shot just like I asked, and I'm like, seriously, that is not as bad as the IV when they're trying to dig around. So he got it started, we're all good. So got into surgery at 11, got out at 1, and uh, Drove home, got the kids. Here I am. I feel good. I really do. I think. Thank God for this journey this year. This marks the <laughs> official end of the surgical journey. I still have some uh, about a year's worth of some 
injections in my stomach, which are always just a load of fun, but they're not that bad. Mm -hmm. But God is good. So my point in all that is, whatever you're facing, you can do it. Because I'm a wimp when it comes to needles. I can tolerate pain, and I can tolerate discipline, four weeks without a coffee. I can tolerate that stuff. I just don't like IVs being started on my hands because they don't go well. So anyway, I just want to encourage you. When you think of something tough, think, you know, I can do this. You know, and if, if I serve as that example, I'm blessed to be that example for you. So that's why I insisted on being here against the wishes of my family and my husband who just wants me to kick back in my bed and relax. I'm thinking, I can't do that. You know I can't do that. So as we wrap up CD Unseen, it's not even up there anymore. It's over there. Oh, oh, I it. You thought it was still here, though, didn't you? For a moment, I forgot. It's <laughs> <laughs> Unseen. Not all the <laughs> not all the light in his my that. body yet. But um, I praise God for that. I lit up my little candle here that I got. It says, believe when it's beyond reason to believe. I was waiting for the perfect time to light that up. I got it's a three candle tear I got from my cousin. Uh, back in May, I uh, I taught a women's conference for her at her church. Prior to having all the news that I was about to face for the summer, although in my heart I already knew, so I was preaching this women's conference, going the whole time. I know I have this. I don't have this. But anyway, whatever it is you're believing for, God will see you through it. He yes, already knows so. the answer. So I'm thankful for that. And so that this kind of um, kind of the crescendo for me is, yeah, it's okay. It's all good. So um, anyway, I only have a couple scriptures for you tonight. Okay, so let's do the first one. It's actually out of the same chapter, three slides, I should say. Um, so as we're in John, and I'm going to ask Brett, could you read that so I'm not yelling, and plus I didn't print this even out. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. And they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Go ahead and pull that one, Michelle, for me. Um, bear much fruit. Remember, I'm always talking about that. But how is our life productive in the spirit or in the flesh doing things that we're supposed to do for the Lord? Only when we're connected with the Lord. Like, in our own effort, all it is is effort. And we may do some good things. You know, we may feed the poor. We may raise money for a charity. You know, whatever it is. But in yourself, when you do it, that's how you get burned out and frustrated when it's when what you do is not received or returned, that can get exhausting when it's unappreciated. But when you are connected with the vine, you're living. That's why I love that alive tree so much. Even though it's out of focus, I keep trying to find a better version. I can't find one. But it's really how our lives should look. They should be fruitful spiritually. They should be fruitful physically, right? And so we shouldn't always be in a season of lack emotionally, relationally. Remember all those areas? Relationships, emotions. Thoughts, finances, and spiritually. We should be bearing fruit in all those areas. Different seasons come and go. Trees aren't always bearing fruit. It's not always the season of bearing fruit. And fruit trees take a long time when you first plant them to do anything, right? And it's called patience in the spirit. Baby Christians can't just jump out and start doing things without some rooting. And then also, there's seasons of pruning for a good fruit tree and roses. Have you ever really had a good rose bush? To really take care of it, you have to do what seems counterintuitive. You have to cut it apart and cut it down somewhat to actually get more flowers. Doesn't that seem weird? But you know, we're always compared in the Bible as fruit trees, right? And so the Bible is very clear that if there's a part that's not bearing fruit and it's dead, it needs to be cut off. Don't be the part of the tree that God cuts off. Please don't. Press in. Stay connected to him. To bear fruit and also with the see the unseen and walking by faith and knowing that when you pray your prayers will be answered how do you do that it says being connected to the vine right let's look at the second part of that right please as the father loved me i also have loved you abide in my love if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love 
just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Now, what's his commandment? Is it the Ten Commandments here? No. No? Two. It's boiled down to two. Can you keep two? <laughs> can you love God? That takes care of the first three commandments, I believe. And can you love others? That takes care of the other seven. That's it. That's it. So he's, he's narrowed it down for us slow learners. Okay? Here's his commandment. So... How do we know we're in the vine? How do we know we're part of God? How do we know he's in us? When we show our love for him by loving others. It's too simple. And we screw it up so bad. Badly. We screw it up so badly. He's proper grammar. Okay. <laughs> yes. next, next chapter. Go ahead, Brett. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. That's it. That's it. How we see the unseen is when we trust what we can't see. And what does the Bible say? These things remain. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest is love. Those eternal things that you can't see are the things we should be pursuing. Laying up treasures in heaven, not trying to claw the top here. Because your life could be over like that. We all will go sometime. We are all going sometime. But we never have to taste death because we just step into the other side of eternity that we've already started here. Can we just love one another, love God, that's it, and bear fruit? It's so simple. I don't know why we make it so hard. Why do we make it so hard? God, is it your will? I don't know. Does it keep the two commandments? Mm -hmm. Are you loving God and loving your neighbor? You know? That's like a true-false test. Mm -hmm. There's not that many ways to get it wrong. <laughs> true-false. Right? All right. So, I'm going to have... Um, who's my helpers? Josh? I've made a little popcorn bag for you for a snack. We're going to sit and watch a video clip. How many of you don't know anything about Duck Dynasty? I do. You don't know anything about it. Okay, let me give you the let me give you an example. Of this. I'll tell you why I chose this. Okay. Okay. So there's this family down in Louisiana. Louisiana folk aren't rich. This whole duck dynasty craze is about this family, this father who created a duck call. You know, duck hunter. Okay. Well, it took off. They are multi-millionaires, a bunch of unlikely misfits. <laughs> the reason I've chosen this video to have you kind of reflect, as a so, small snowman one are for kids or for people with a smaller appetite. It should be one for everybody. Okay, so the reason I chose this is because no matter where your life is right now, I believe you can relate to one of the testimonies, okay? As you're watching, would you please make mental notes in your mind where you started and where you are now? Because I would like either tonight or New Year's Eve at our service to let you testify what God has done for the CD Unseen. In a sentence, where it, what's your testimony? Okay? And so as you watch this quietly, reflectively, parts of it are very dark, it's on purpose, it's uh, of the I Am Second series. We've shown several of these testimonies before. I believe you can relate either to the dad, the wife of a failing marriage, the testimony of an addict, a wayward son. All of us can relate to one of these people. And it captures love God, love my neighbor. Okay? It captures the difference, the amazing supernatural difference before God and after God. So for those of you who have never watched Duck Dynasty, now they have their own reality show that shows you behind the scenes, supposedly. A bunch of misfits. And the funny thing was, when the show started, the producers would put bleeps in to pretend that these guys were swearing at each other, which they've never sworn. 
And so they said, if you don't take those bleeps out, we're not doing the show. We don't swear. We don't use the Lord's name in vain. So don't make it look like we do just to make it edgy. Because we all know that reality TV is as far from reality as the Flintstones and the Jetsons on both ends of the spectrum, right? Okay. And the other thing was, every episode closes with the whole family, sons, wives, children, grandma, grandpa, sitting at the dinner table sharing a meal. They open up in prayer and they always say, in the name of Jesus. And the producers tried to take that out too and they said, no. This is who we are. Okay? So if you've ever heard the whole Duck Dynasty, it's a bunch of Louisiana, redneck, bearded guys who are so wealthy, they can't possibly spend all their money. But they didn't start out that way. So I hope you enjoy it. I would like you to reflect in your own heart what God's dealing with you on. Love God, love my neighbor. Okay? All right. So Robbie's got the lights. And uh, does everybody have popcorn? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll sit down next to my husband. Aww. We all go six feet deep in the ground. I think now they're digging them about four and a half feet to save money. But we all end up in a casket. And people wipe their eyes. We're gone. It's called fact. You saw where I grew up. We're getting trouble with a beard up at school. I'm coming straight up there. <laughs> Good old country folks from Louisiana, and it's just weird to have people stop you at the grocery store and want to take a picture. But you know, the way I look at it, you know, God had a plan for us to to do what we do, to say what we say, so uh, other people can come to know Jesus. When the when the show first started, they said we want a lot of fighting, and we want y'all to get mad at each other and like bickering. And, and try to get us to cuss and do all that kind of stuff. And all, I mean, our family was like, that's, that's not who we are. Everywhere I go, everything I do, this is what I talk about. They attempt me to give a speech on something else, but guess what? It always comes back to this. We all go six feet deep in the ground. But the grave is a problem. So is sin. Jesus came down in flesh and saw both of them. So for me, my household, I just think that uh, we would all be better off if we loved God and loved each other. At the end of the day, you will be happy, happy, happy. My name is Neil Robertson. My name is Miss Kay. My name is Jeff Robertson. My name is Reed Robertson. I'm sucking. See, in the South, we don't say sucking. We say suck it. Like it's a teal. Suck it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>
get seven. Looks like we'll do our normal service plus a few extra things, have the theme reveal, and have all that done by about nine. And then we're looking at doing a pool and a ping pong tournament. Oh. Maybe in here we could show Elf. Yes. And, then some, <laughs> and I'm thinking communion about 11.30 as we bring in the new year at, at midnight for prayer. Does that sound good? Yes. And you all bring some good snacks to share. But we'll worry about signing up what snack you want to bring next Friday. Let's get through this weekend first, okay? All right, so I invite you to come worship, celebrate whatever it is you need to do.